Hey guys, Sodor5 here with episode number 8 of our Marseille career mode and we're kicking this episode off with some terrible, terrible news that Morgan Sansone has suffered a broken toe and will be out for two months. Luckily for us, this episode we are entering into January, so we could sign a potential replacement if we need to, but we do already have the likes of Maxime Lopez, Strootman, we have a couple of youth players coming through in the centre mid position, so we should have his kind of area covered quite well as we go into the round of 16 in the Coupe de la Ligue against Saint Etienne. Now as we always do we're going to show very very compacted highlights for the cup games from the next round onwards which will be the quarterfinals, the semi-finals and then the final we'll do more uh, our more kind of general highlights of the game. But 69 minutes into this game, a chance there by Dimi Payet is well saved by Rufia, forcing the corner. It's then whipped across by the man himself. Goes to the edge of what's the Kahuli, who plays it to Thalvin, playing on the left-hand side because obviously Payet taking that corner. What he's going to do, go to the byline, dink it across. Dimi Payet is there to just volley it past the keeper first time. And I think he nutmegs Rufia there with a very, very nice finish. And that is going to put us 1-0 up as Strootman plays the ball to Kahuli. He's going to thread one through to Thalvin. He's 1-1 on with the keeper. Takes one too many touches, though, unfortunately for us. But it does not matter. We have won that game 1-0. We will go through to the quarterfinals of the Coupe de la Ligue as we return to business in the league. As you can see here, Maxime Lopez has come in to replace Sanson in the centre midfield position. I think it's an adequate replacement. I think Maxime Lopez is a very, very good player to bring into the squad and just put in a shift whenever he is asked. So, taking on Nimes, they are, I think they're a lower down in the table team, so we should be winning this one, especially at home. But the first chance is actually going to come their way as they whip the ball across. It's a poor touch, though, by the winger, and it allows Sakai to just charge away from him as he's not got any real runners making some runs to kind of aid him in his attacking prowess. But Payet does play a brilliant ball through to Thalvin. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He can dink it across to Ole Giroud, and he decides to go the unselfish way. Six minutes into the game, we are 1-0 to the good against Nimes, and it is Olivier Giroud scoring a goal. Obviously, we have Payet continuing his fine form in the Saint-Etienne game. Giroud looks to be getting back to his form in this game, as this time... Again, he could have played it across to Giroud. He went for the goal himself, Thalvin. Quite selfish, but it was saved by the keeper. And unfortunately, the score still stays at 1-0. You can see really 13 minutes into this game, we're having a lot of chances once again. Thalvin hits the post. He could have had two goals by now. We are just can't quite get him on target here. As they clear the ball upfield, it's going to be won by Mawat, but Rongi is going to get on to the end of it. And we do, unfortunately, we're going to kind of capitalise on that press up in that corner. They did get it away quite nicely. But yeah, we're hoping that Drew can get back onto form. Because I don't really want to be spending all of our money on a new striker when we did that in the summer with Oli Giroud. But he has kind of slowed down. Obviously, Benedetto's not been the best. So maybe we sign a new striker and with someone missing a chance like that to put us 2-0 up, I think we need to make Giroud the rotation and actually bring in a new first teamer. So I think that's what we're going to do in January when we get there. We should be there. Obviously, by the end of this episode, we'll have some players in the squad. But a chance there from Pyatt to whip the ball across. It's well saved by the keeper, and it's forced away by the defence quite nicely. But in this game, seriously, we should be 3, maybe 4 nil up. But we just aren't taking advantage of the positions we're getting ourselves into. But something I will tell you right now is in this second half, Thalvin goes off you know he was good in that first half he hit the post he had his shot saved by the keeper quite nicely but this second half he just flips the switch and he goes off as here chance for Oli Giroud but he can't quite get to the ball before the defender or the goalkeeper and it is put out but from a corner 73 minutes into this game there's a corner here Mawat whips it across and Briacon gets to the ball before anyone else he's in the six yard box and he's not really being marked too tightly Obviously, Mandanda comes out to try and win the ball, but it does get to Briacon before, and he just heads it into the back of the net very, very easily, and a bit too easily, if you ask me. As Ake, out on this left-hand side, he's come on for Dimi Payet. He's going to cut past his man quite nicely, actually. He holds on to the ball. He's going to go back to Amavi. Amavi's going to lay it off to Strootman. Strootman finds Giroud. Can't quite find anyone. He's obviously being pushed away from the goal, 
and Neves are going to be defending for their lives to hold on to this 1-1 lead, but Thalvin, he's played through by Streetman, and on his stronger left foot, tucks it past the keeper really nicely in the 82nd minute, he makes it 2-1 to us, we're back in front, three points will be staying with us, we wouldn't have to be drawing this game, a chance here though, we win back the ball with Streetman, a very nice interception, We've got a few minutes left in this second half. It's Ake. Plays the ball to Giroud. Giroud's going to play it through to Koi Kahui. Who then plays it to Thalvin out on this right-hand side. Lovely bit of skill to get away from his man. Plays it back into Oli Giroud. Again, holding it up. Back to Thalvin. Turns his man brilliantly. This time he's on the opposite side. And he hits it with his right foot. And again, he beats the keeper. And again, it is now three points. Three goals. And a victory for us. Thalvin with a goal on his left. A goal on his right. A goal on the left of the goal. And a goal on the right-hand side as well. And it's just, he's showing we need to complete his objective. Because obviously if we don't complete his objective, he will be sold. It's not what we want. Also, a little bit of news. Just before we go into January, you can see on the 27th of December, one of our players wants to be taken out of the youth squad and actually come into the first team. His name is Deluk. He's 6'2", 17 years old, 4-star, no, sorry, 3-star, 4-star. Not the worst. He's actually a very, very decent little talent. But we get an updated look at our players. We've got a couple of good ones in there. And we're actually going to pick up a couple more good ones here in Barrett. And a couple of these guys maybe would work for other teams. But I'm trying to look for that 94... No, sorry, that 90 mini minimum. As we did a transfer offer here from Leicester for one of our starting left wingers. Obviously, we've struggled to say his name all season long. It's Nemanja Radonjic. But Leicester have come in for the 23-year-old. I want 20 million for him, plus a little bit of a sell-on clause. So I think he's got a good potential. And obviously, we're not going to... If we reject an offer from Leicester, he's going to put in a transfer request. He's going to want to leave. So realistically, we tried to get as much money out of Leicester as we could. We got 18.5 million. So we will need to replace this man. But we can't quite do it straight away. As we get another offer here for Saar. So, for Saar, it's an offer from Porto. He's obviously not in the first team anymore. He has been replaced by Sakai. He's 27 years old, 76 overall. Tried to get 15 million for him. They were nowhere near what I wanted for him. We tried to go down to 10. Again, they were trying to keep it at 8.2. We went for 9.5. Again, 8.2. They added a sell-on clause, though. We went for 8.5. They accepted the 8.5. So he will also be sold on. So unfortunately, we we're losing Randonjic out on the left-hand side. And we're also losing Saar at right-back. But luckily for us, we've got rotation at right back with Sakai. That means that Marvi will come back into the first team and he'll play more games at the left back position. But left wing, we've only really got Ake. So I do want to try and sign a new left winger that could come into the team. We could obviously play Pyatt there, so we could sign a new Cam instead. But I'm going to try and look for a young player that we can bring in. Obviously, Rajonovic was 23 years old. So if we can get someone younger than him with a bit more potential than him, that would be brilliant. As we go into this game against Stad Rene, 10 minutes into the game, it's a great shot by Giroud. But it is well saved by the goalkeeper as we move into the second half. A free kick. It's played right back to their defence. A very nice header, powerful header to get it that far back to them. But Rongier wins the ball. Can't quite get it to Giroud though. And again, they're going to work their way out from the back. As Trigo looks to dribble past his man. He does so into Huno Niang with a brilliant flick over the top and a lovely little volley into that bottom right-hand corner past Mandanda. And I think it was Kamara who flipped the ball over the top off. And 50 minutes into the game, they go 1-0 to the good. And Niang goes over to the fans and celebrates right in front of him. It's not what you want to be doing. We are losing too many games this season. We started the season off brilliantly with that fine run of consecutive clean sheets and consecutive wins. But we're struggling now. We get to the end of the season. T players are getting tired, restless. Obviously, we're going into January. Some players might want to force a move. Luckily for us, though, we've got Mandanda in goal. He's, he's Marseille through and through. With a brilliant save there to deny Niang from making it 2-0, doubling their lead. We're going to try and get back in with Lopez now as he's going to play the ball across to Demi Payet. Strikes it. Very nice strike. A lot of power behind that ball, but Salah can easily catch it out of the air. And you can see we're in the 91st minute now. Traore down this right-hand side. Looks to whip the ball across. We do get a block in. We've got one final chance. We give the ball straight to Niang. And he's going to have a chance for Stad Rene as he plays the ball through to Ruta. Not the best of shots, but it does waste a little bit of time. And Danda... Can't even get the ball upfield. We do lose this game 1-0. But it is due to an incredible, incredible goal by and by Niang. So you can kind of let it off, really. There was no stopping that goal. 
because he was a he was like a man possessed when he scored that goal. But Bayern Niang makes it 1-0. We do lose this game, unfortunately for us. But what that does mean is we can spend the... We've got a little bit of a break now between this game and the next game. So we can go and look for some targets to sign. So the first of which, we were going to go travel to Germany and offer an offer for Alassane Player. 26 years old, 80 overall. His current value is 18 million euros. We offered that. They wanted way, way, way too much money for him. So we did, unfortunately, have to back out of that deal. He can play left wing. He can play striker. So he would be a perfect replacement for Giroud and for Rajonovic. But a, non, a young man that I saw, Antonio Marin, a left winger, 19 years old, 68 overall. Obviously, we can grow him. We're going to offer 2 million plus a 25% sell-on clause. And Dynamo Zagreb are going to accept that one straight away. I think it's a really good offer for him. Because obviously, if we grow him up, sell him for 40 million... They are going to get 10 million of that added on to that 2.5 million. So, for them, I think it's a good deal. Obviously, his future fee is going to definitely determine whether it's a good deal for them or not. But, you can see there, I offered him a rotation role. He wanted the important first team role. He wants to play games, which is what I want to see. We're going to offer him five years. So we're going to offer him 12,500 per year with a 100,000 euros signing on bonus. And a goal bonus of 500,000 if he can score 20 goals for us this season. Keeping it realistic, this man is going to come in. He is going to replace Radonjic, the man that went to Leicester. He's younger, he's less overall, but he does have more talent. We do welcome Antonio Marin to the club. He'll come in on that left-hand side. The young Croatian, he signed a five-year deal, obviously. So he will be here for probably the majority of this save. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please like, subscribe. Maybe leave some striker suggestions in the comments below. But if you have, please like, subscribe, and peace.